really happy that you're joining my, my kiddos, both for my church and my school. Um, so I'm really thinking about you, and I want you to continue to grow in the Lord and to grow in, um, in, in reading your work, the Bible and, and, and in prayer. I want you to be reading your Bible every day and praying every day. And I think this Bible story will encourage you to do just that and encouraged me. I wanted to share that with you today. Um, to give you a little background on this story, um, it, it's a story about Peter, a disciple of Jesus, and it's taking place uh, shortly after Jesus went to heaven. Now, Jesus had died and was buried, and he rose again. And so, again, this is when Jesus went to heaven, and Peter went about preaching the gospel, which is the good news that Jesus um, died and was buried and rose again. So he was spreading the gospel throughout, um, through, throughout the area here. And so this is a story about how what happens, uh, what happened to him and how prayer really, um, how God just really answered some Christians' prayer in this situation, a really difficult situation for Peter. All right, so we're going to begin by reading from Acts chapter 12, and we're going to read through verses 1 through 16, and I'm going to be giving some uh, insight as well during the reading. All right, let me get my teacher glasses on here. And it begins, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was being made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So imagine the Christians at this time. They, they loved Peter, and they really looked to him for guidance with uh, learning more about Jesus and, and how to follow Christ. And just imagine if our pastor was put into prison, and what a, what a terrible thing that would be. And so I would like to think that I'd be like these Christians and just would keep our pastor before the Lord in prayer and, and just co constantly praying for him. And so that's what the Christians were doing for Peter. In verse 6, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So I'm thinking here about Peter between two soldiers, probably, in a dirty prison, uh, sleeping. He's actually sleeping in this in this very difficult situation. He doesn't know if he's going if what's going to happen. He doesn't know the outcome of his situation. He could be put to death any time. They could be torturing him. He doesn't know what's going to happen here. But he's he's sleeping, fast asleep. And so, isn't that a wonderful example that? no matter what happens to us in life, that we can, we can be restful in Jesus. And this is just a beautiful picture of that. And so he's sleeping here in prison between the two soldiers. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. His chains just fell off. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, because uh, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. And Peter just was kind of like, Oh, I can't believe this is happening. He didn't know he didn't know if he was really seeing an angel or not. He just thought, what, am I dreaming? What's going on here? So he continues to follow the angel. 
And he went out and followed him. And verse 10, when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. The gate just flew open. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith, the angel departed from him. The angel just disappeared. And, and Peter's standing there, left there without the angel. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews, the Jews that had rejected Jesus and that hated Christians at the time. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of, jo mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. The Christians were still praying. They didn't know that the Lord had um, answered their prayers already, and they were still praying for Peter. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel or a girl came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness. And she was so excited when she heard Peter's voice. And she ran in and told the other Christians how Peter stood before the gate. And they said to her, the Christians said to her, what, thou, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. She was very persistent in telling them, she was very serious in telling them, no, this is Peter's, this was Peter's voice. And then said they, it is, it is his angel. Maybe, they thought, well, maybe, maybe it's Peter's spirit or something. Maybe it could be some kind of angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when he had opened the door, and I'm sorry, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. They were astonished. They were just so so happy to, that and joyful to see Peter that God they that God had answered their prayer in such a, a special miraculous way and that reminds me of when Jesus uh, said in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26 and I'm going to go there now it said Jesus said with God all things are possible things that are impossible with men are possible with God. There is nothing that God can't do. And so this story about how God miraculously helped Peter escape from the prison um, really shows how powerful prayer is and how, how God cares and how he does answer our prayers. So this should encourage us just to take all, all of our um anything that we're going through or, or pray for others who are going through different difficult situations to really just be fervent in prayer and we can see God work in a great way when we do that and it's so wonderful to know Jesus as our savior to be able to take things to God in prayer and that he hears us the bible says in John 3 16 that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And when you've believed on Jesus and trusted him as your Lord and Savior, oh, it makes your life so, so much more um, meaningful and, and you're at peace. Just remember how Peter was sleeping in prison between those two soldiers. He was sleeping. And that's because he knew that, that, he had that, that God was in control and that whatever happened to him, God was in control and he was going to see him through and that he knew that he had eternal life through, even if they took him, even if they killed him, that he would continue to live with God in heaven forever. So that should be a comfort to us, for us who believe on Jesus as our Savior, knowing that no matter what happens, that we, we will be safe with Jesus. And so let's trust in him and let's continue to be faithful in praying to him every day. And we can, and let's look for uh, God to answer our prayers. 
Well, thank you so much for listening, and I hope this has been an encouragement to you. Um, I just love all my kiddos, and I hope that you have a great day. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.